Uh, we're here to discuss a little bit about the Missing in Action uh, team. So first, the first idea is to, to give some information regarding how we are working now, and then we will open the microphone and the discussion, because we want to do some slight change on the process and, and, and the workflow, but we want to hear about it. We want to hear what other people think. Sorry, I don't have a proper PDF now, so I will move quickly. So right now we work with different tools. We have uh, some sort of scripts that are writing in Python. We have a database. Everything is on quants. Uh, so the, the scripts do the tracking. Uh, we, we use the scripts to save status about the maintainers and to query. There is some service called Carnivore or Echelon that actually uh, pull out all the information from the, from the mailing list to know when was the last activity from the, from the, from the maintainer. So we also use that to check. Uh, we have a one private RC channel. Uh, the password and everything, the information is on the wiki. So if you want to join or report over there, it's, it's good. And of course, the alias, <laughs> which some people know. So tracking is done manually. Uh, that means nobody is actually uh, looking actively for, for, for missing in action persons. We normally register the person who has been reported to us. Uh, or if we bump with uh, people who looks not active, we, we are manually added to the, to the database. Then we use several tools. When I, when I say several tools, includes even social network. I have been even contacting people on Twitter and Facebook <laughs> to see their whereabouts. So that's up to every team member how, how they decide to do the tracking. So now we, we, we have several status. This is the current situation. So we have... Uh, all these status which represent what people is doing, uh, OK is the normal. Then we move to VC, and then we start to move to different status, like inactive, or responsible, retiring, until we get to MIA, and then we orphan the package. Then we, just, we move to, to needs what, which the Debian account manager needs to take the decision and remove the account, etc. <laughs> you can. <laughs> So we have a way to, to reset the status normally. Uh, there is a, a full reset, which is OK. And there is one temporary reset that we use that is called will fix. So sometimes we ask people, how are you doing? And people say, OK, I'm busy. And I will come back in several months. So we'll use fi will fix and put like, will fix in three months. Then we manually check again if the people have actually improved the situation, package has been updated or whatever. And then we decide to move to OK. And we have different prod levels. First, we start with nice, which is a very nice email. How are you doing? Everything is OK. Uh, can we help? Then we start to move a little bit more rude and ask, OK, you need uh, probably more containers. And then we issue a last warning telling, OK, if you don't do anything, we will orphan your package. And then we decide to orphan the package. OK, uh, this is how we update the status. We normally do it by email with some specific information on the heaters. So we can put comments there. So the comments are somehow privately because we include information regarding what is happening with the people. Uh, we use several ways to, to see, to, in, to inform the other team members to see, OK, this guy has four in them use, or he has not been uploading for one year, or whatever. And that's it. <laughs> So I will hand the microphone to Anna. She was working also with, with, on this, on the new ideas, and Mones, who is the other team member who is remotely participating. And I will move to the Titan pod. So anyone is welcome to, to edit. OK. So what, what we want to do is first, uh, the first idea came to start doing some reporting using web interface to make it life easy and to have some way of, of inform the people about what we are doing. Because sometimes you send an email to the alias, and probably you will never get an answer. Uh, but some action is taken in the background. I, we, I know we need to improve that. <laughs> but probably if the, if the people who report, the, the people who is missing in action have a way to check how is everything going, it can relieve some frustration. And then,
we want to change the workflow also and remove the current the current plenty of status and prod and do like a, a full merge of everything and change for example define a, a specific times like start with a first warning and give 16 weeks to react then move to a second warning and move to a final warning and then offer the package so we want to reduce all these status like responsible uh, unres unresponsible or whatever, and just use three or, or four to make things easy to us and to other people who want to contribute. Uh, well, so the new idea is just to have this sort, this set of reminders. Okay, first reminder, second reminder, third reminder, and it will fix, and then move to next what, and that's it. <laughs> Another question that we were having is uh, how much of the information can be available for everyone because some people ask, for example, uh, what is going on. But as I say before, we normally put uh, private comments because some people actually tell us, okay, uh, I'm changing jobs or I'm doing this and we, we actually add that information to the database so we know how to ask and be more human when we ask because it's a kind of awkward job to asking someone to, to to do something on the on the project when they are when they are not active. And this is our current situation as Agus first. Uh, we have several people who needs to be contacted, several people who needs to be contacted for the second time and some people that the packet needs to be orphaned. <laughs> and uh, the discussion that the key ring maintainers has lately about pinging the people who has weaker keys on the on the key ring and decide what to do with it, that it's supposed to, uh, it will be nice to coordinate together so we can actually decide what to do with these people, probably included or manually ping from the MIA team. Uh, also, as part of, of, of our tools, uh, we save the mailbox with all the all the conversation with the maintainer who have been tracked. So that we have a collection of mailbox for for each maintainer who have been tracked. So everyone who joined the team, for example, and want to check what happened a year before the people was contacted, can open the mailbox and follow the threads and even using that information to contact the people back again. It's open for discussion, so I will really love if someone <laughs> decides to. <laughs> Microphone. Just us. There we go. So on the the private versus public status, it it might be very worthwhile to come up with some indicators of of status that don't include all obviously the personal information. So you could still be able to provide that overall status. Uh, you know that says you know we're working with the maintainer or we're working with the developer or you know basically something that would allow someone to see that is actively being worked or the, you know, the situation's in, in good shape or bad shape without exposing the personal information. Okay. Um. So with the current set of timings, are we not being possibly too nice to people? Uh, well, <laughs> and sometimes we lack of time, you know? Sometimes it happens like we yeah. do a ping and we wait and the four weeks or whatever it becomes one month or two months. <laughs> sure. I mean, so when mails are sent out, uh, I mean, so the system at the moment, I mean, I've looked into this, I've pinged a few people over over the years and whatever. I've forgotten the details, I'm getting old, my memory fades. 
Um, I mean, do the do the existing tools actually keep track and automatically, um, you know, ping people to say no. we haven't heard from this person? Should they? It's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, that, that's that, that's the kind of thing I'm thinking. We were talking about automat automatizing this, but with a manual handling. So just prepare the mails and uh, approve. It's probably the best, the best approach here. Because the discussion there has been like uh, sending automatic emails is a little bit um, impersonal, and, and this task requires some social interaction. I mean, it's very sad to ask someone what you're doing, and then it's better when you, when you actually write the email and try to be a little bit warm. <laughs> The, we talked with Anna uh, a couple of days ago about merging database with contributors Debian org uh, because there's a lot of overlap and the contributors is already tracking people's activity very coarsely. It only tells you I've seen activity on that team at th that date. Yeah, actually we even use, uh, at least me for example, I use contributors to see oh. information that I don't very nice. <laughs> have on the, on the other system. Um, so I could uh, reasonably easily add uh, some MIA features to contributors. Um, things that we discussed were the ability for anyone that is logged in Debian contributors, to so report. both DDs and people with Alio accounts, mm -hmm. to go to a person page and click report as MIA. Okay, uh, we have a comment added by Ricardo, who is the other team member working on MIA. Mm -hmm that uh, is the first here, that we, sh we, we should include a mandatory field explaining why or giving some information when you do the reporting. That's it. Yeah, that's, uh, that's report as Mia <laughs> with field yeah. saying, I want it, you know. Wow. I, I, we, I, can, we can even track the status there. For example, we can check uh, uh, at least uh, has been reported or is been tracked or like two or three visible status, not the full status we have in the database. Mm -hmm. That will be cool. So. If you log in back, you can see how is the, how the contributor is doing, if, if it's so actually being tracked or not. So I could have for each person in the contributors a, a MIA report log to wherever people reported as potentially MIA with, with a text field saying why. Yeah, right. And then uh, if someone is logged in who's part of the MIA team, they can see all the logs and they could click a button to send a ping, again, with a text field with things to put in the email. Um, and that would also be logged. Uh, the email may even have, uh, like, click here to reply, mm -hmm. uh, that goes on the website and adds to the MIA log the message saying, well, I'm actually alive. Um, with <laughs> or are you just discussing? No, it's a buff. So I said what could be, uh, I, from a different team, I'm kind of saying what could I can offer. Um, so that will have a sort of lightweight, well, not lightweight, but uh, simplified, but a swift workflow, because you, you essentially log there yeah. and see a log with, with all the reports and what the person uh, said. Yeah and make like a very qualitative judgment about what's going on. Um, so yeah, those are reasonably easy to implement. Okay, that would uh, be great. <laughs> uh, to what extent does this have any kind of API? Uh, because I want to do, I'm part of the DSA team, mm -hmm. and I want to basically close a lot of shell accounts because okay. currently we have a zillion shell accounts okay. and like you pointed out with about 500 people being in various states of missing in actions then that's kind of accounts I yep. might want to close or I want to so what I want to do is both uh, restrict so people don't have accounts on systems by default but they have an easy way to do I need an account in this portal box now please and then that gets provisioned Real time, basically. Okay. Um, cool. So by default, you can't just log into a portal box. You'll you'll have to kind of go run this command. Um, and the other thing I want to do is currently we don't expire people from teams. So being able to track a little bit, especially if there's if there's a way for for me to take the information from 
possibly from contributors or from some of the things you are tracking. So I can figure out that, oh yeah, you actually haven't done anything to the website for the last actually, period of time. The query information is visible for all DDs. You just need to log in on Quants and, okay. uh, and, and you can check the readme there. Uh, you can see our comments, so <laughs> you can see what was going on with the people. There's one called uh, Mia to do that is the one that pulled the information that is in the in the bottom, mm. the one that you see over there. That see, and actually gives you the the the, uh, the login and everything details, the, the key, etc. Is that in a parsable parsable format, or is that completely free form? We use we use two files. We use one mailbox, and we use another kind of sort of database, which is another text file and some Python scripts that, that do everything to it. Okay, so. yeah, <laughs> sounds good. Like me a team, usually you measure inactivity, right? Yeah. And um, for me, it kind of seems reversed, because when I find something that's broken, I want to fix it, I realize the person is probably Mia for a really long time, and then I need to kickstart the Mia process, which on basic timings if person is me and not replying is like 28 weeks or plus yeah. which is like half a year yeah but still you have an mu true <laughs> true i still have an mu that's true and like like yesterday we talked about setting the expiry date on the keys to self expire people yeah. can we assume that everyone is mia mm then measure activity and to see if there is any activity within last year you are okay and then and if there are no activity that we can automatically detect in the past year or for example two years or three years right then we kind of should ping those people mia even all if even if all of their packages have zero bugs and they have no posts on mailing list, no logins to any shell accounts, no uploads, no sponsorships, no nothing, such that we could kind of proactively clean people and kind of have expiry on your activity by default instead of like measuring inactivity. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I understand your point. Like, like the reverse. <laughs> yeah, instead of defaulting okay, defaulting me. Yeah. I think, it, I mean, it can be quite complicated. So no. <laughs> Maybe not taking action on it, but yeah. at least measuring it. Okay, uh, Enrico was, uh, was also... <laughs> <laughs> uh, just, just a short point. I think um, it was said before that automated mails are impersonal. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to balance the point that uh, when you act, when you interact with a package maintainer that it doesn't answer for months, it's even more impersonal. And I think I would balance the Im impersonal mail just ping and do something about your package is better than yeah. interacting with MIA people. Um, about uh, 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 oh, about uh, the um, the um, Mia by default. Uh, there's a problem in Debian in that no, it's it's essentially impossible to track all possible Debian activity. If somebody is a Debian contributor and what they do is taking care of Vietnamese translation, uh, they would get an email a year saying, "Are you still alive?" <laughs> and it's not that nice. On the other hand, it's nice that. As long as everything is fine in my work, I don't get pinged, uh, even if I don't do anything. So I have it I makes sense that things are triggered when something is lacking. And I'm all for shortening the time, because if things are triggered when something is lacking, say there's RC bugs that are unanswered, uh, then we shouldn't wait that six months. Those bugs should have been answered in the first place. So if I go and see a package that has dead activity in the BTS for some time, NRC bugs, and I want to take it over, uh, I would believe that w we could move to a situation where it's easier to take over things when they're not properly maintained. Uh, I have one question for, for now that I see Anival and some other people. I remember when, when we implemented the Debian maintainer process, it was required to do an annual ping. Mm. That has been done? No. no. They, 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 they su <laughs> they, they're supposed to send the ping every... They do so. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, it's uh, carrying on from uh, Dimitri and, and Enrico. I mean, it's, it is difficult to reliably detect activity 
Um, so a lot of our contributors may not necessarily contribute all that regularly or it might be very difficult to track them. I think we all understand that. If we get to the stage, if you're in MIA, then that means you're already a DD. Um, is it unreasonable to expect that either we should see cont contributions somehow we can track, or you know, so we send the mail one, you know, once every six months if we haven't seen anything in six months. And by all means, there will be some false positives to start with, but uh, if you know, we send mail to people and say, we don't think we've seen any contributions, if you, if you think you have, can you please tell us where and help us, to, help us to track those in future? That will be a really good answer to that. But we definitely, we should be able to do this and send a, definitely an impersonal email and say, sorry this sounds impersonal, but, but our automated systems don't think that they, you know, don't seem to be able to find anything. Apologies if they're wrong, please help us fix them. Yeah. Actually, we have in the in the current scenario the the, the MPA, which is non-package activity. So you can theoretically mark someone like, okay, uh, this guy is doing web and it's not trackable, and leave it there. But after that, there's no way to track it. Uh, there was some discussion with Anna early regarding that, and the point was we supposed to care, take care about the package more than the than the than tracking the people itself. So. I think we need to balance somehow. Uh, I'm, I wonder if, if there's a way to possibly expedite transfer of packages from an MIA maintainer to a team. So uh, there's been a couple of packages which I've NMU'd and, and I've sent, you know, there's been clearly no, um, no, 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 uh, no activity yeah. by the maintainer. and. Um, I'd be interested in, in adopting it, but not as a sole maintainer, but transferring the ownership of that package to a team. And That's you know, the it's, it's always possible for that maintainer to, to wake up and say, I still am interested in it. That, that's Debian Quality Assurance, who take care of the orphan package. <laughs> I know what you mean, because I have done that. It's uh, cohijacking packages. So yeah. you see a package that is not maintained, Clearly, so you start uploading it, but keep the person, the current maintaining uploaders, and after some time you remove it. Some people do that. Yeah. In plenty of cases, uh, I think it's a good option. But it's still reporting this person to Mia yeah. is good because uh, this person might need uh, what? We actually, moment. we actually it depends on the scenario. But sometimes we get reports, people telling us like, okay, uh, actually very interesting on this packet. And we skip all the process together and we say, okay, let's do this as a warning for the maintainer. Please take the package and, 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 leave, and, and leave the MIA process to continue in the background. So, but I get your point. Like, you mean like having a team to specifically maintain uh, some packets that are being neglected? <laughs> yeah, not, not like an you know, MIA maintainer's team, but sort of like, well, this package naturally would fit. Oh, sorry, thank you. This package would naturally fit in this team, and because they're the sole maintainer, you know, uh, we we have a process where we can, you know, adopt that package into the team and let the team maintain it. But I, I like your idea of just keeping them there um, while the MIA process goes on, and then if they do wake up, then. Uh, someone else was raising the hand over there. <laughs> Do we separate which activity requires your GPG key to be in the uploader skewing and which activity does not? And if all of your activity does not actually require your GPG keyring to be an uploader skewing, for example, you only vote and you only commit for example, translations via SVN to alias, right? Then your key, your GPG key, your uploading DD, you don't actually make any uploads, should it be in the uploader skewing? But that will be something like moving the existing developers or uploading, per, uploading developers to the Non developer. uploading. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, I'm just uh, grabbing the microphone away from you because uh, it, it, it's not f the first time I hear this in uh, during the conf. Right. I do not think, uh, well, 
I know it's not a, a hierarchical a, a set of uh, privileges, but let's say a, several people have, to have told me we should demote the accounts that do not show activity in some way. The thing is, it's quite involved. Uh, if uh, I have to move uh, an account from one to the other keyring, I also have to ask DSA to change the account type and uh, and and well, maybe I am being responsible. Uh, uh, I'm not doing uploads for some packages, but I uh, for my packages, I mean, but I can still uh, keep that uh, ability. So I mean, yeah, w w we want to require people to keep up to date, not only with their activity, but the, with the current practices. Uh, well, if their key is one K. <laughs> That's uh. <laughs> So, so what I think is important here is for people that I, I don't think we should remove people from uploading uh, gearing because they don't upload. Uh, what I think we should consider is, is things like if you never used your GPD key, uh, then maybe it's not a good idea for it to exist in the gearing at all. Right. Because that means that ba potentially we have a, a, a cryptographic credential out there which is not under good control. So it's not about uploading versus non-uploading. Because mm -hmm. like, oh, yeah, if, right. if, if you vote, for instance, right. then you're actually using your GPT key. And, and that's the same, uh, same approach I'm using for the, the accounts and, and groups, is that if you're actively using a group or actively using uh, an account on a portal box, mm -hmm. then I don't want to shut that down. But mm -hmm. if you have an account on a portal box and you've never logged in there for like in the five years that machine has existed, then that account should have been there in the first place. I think we see a, a trend here in in not having everything in in one account. I mean, not being a DD means being able to vote, having an email address, being uh, able to upload, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I think the current trend is dividing these things and having these various things expire. That doesn't mean that you lose your email address or the right to vote when you, when someone orphans your packages because you're no, not doing work, and I think it's it, quite important to, mm, to not consider the MIA like we remove you from being a DD and that's the long process. Actually, we, want to be we, nice. we don't. We, we we you know our last step is orphan the package, then everything moves to Debian account manager and it's their decision to do whatever they want to do with the with the person. I mean, main 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 point here is package has not been maintained should be orphaned, and then then we decide after that what. Yeah, w w whether you're a DD or not does actually not. It's not actually decided by whether you have a key in the key ring or whether you have an account on Debian systems. Um, Dam decides who is a DD, and they ask keyring maintainers to add the keys of those people to the keyring. And I don't think that there's ever been a case where they haven't added that key, but they are actually free to not do so. And similar, they, they will ask DSA to create an account, and we're actually free not to do so. And I don't believe that has ever, ever happened, but these are actually three separate concepts. Um, uh, it, the, the, um, an active key reminded me uh, that we do not currently have uh, a system to audit key usage. So when I log into my bank, uh, I get an email saying there's been a login into your account. Uh, it would be nice to have a log of every time my GPG key has been used in Debian. So I could see if there is some use that wasn't me and uh, I detect the replay attacks. Um, the same could be used if, if that actually works uh, in a way that there's no way GPG key use that is not tracked with this. It can also be used to see that that key hasn't been used for like three years and then move it to a uh, timeout key ring of some kind. Yeah. Also, Paul studies he was. Yeah. E e Eklon actually <laughs> tracks that. So in LDAP, there's a field which says when a key was last used and where. So that's tracked on Debian lists and uploads and yeah. yeah. So we also like query that information. It, yeah, it's 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 not used everywhere. Like it, I don't think it it tracks uh, votes, for instance. But it no it, it, yeah. it, it it tracks a certain amount of of GPG key usage.
even side in the demons in irregular mailing this one. Does it also track SSH key usage? So I am going to change a bit the, the topic of the, of the discussion. Uh, I would like to talk about a phenomena we have been experiencing in the last two, three years that are the phantom maintainers. So there are people, you go to their developer page that maintains, I don't know, 15, 20 packages. But actually they are doing no job in Debian at all. They just have been, uh, they are used for maintainers in several things. For example, the Perl thing is a very good example of this. But they have no activity, just at some moment they add themselves to maintainers. So I would like to, to ask you all that if you have a co-maintainer who is doing no, no a job at all in the packages to remove them. Okay. Because it makes sometimes the, the query team, very, uh, the, MIA, the MIA team work very difficult. Well, remove it and notify us also. <laughs> yeah, ideally, uh, a maintenance contribution should be tracked via the changelog instead of the maintainer field. We currently have a problem with DCH not putting an email address in the square bracket when there's co maintainer, it only uses the full name. Uh, so try tracking Brian Nelson and Luca Bruno if you can. Uh, and I reported a couple of days ago back to DCH asking if there could be the email address at least added to that, uh, and I don't know how much that would break, but at least that would make people's activity trackable via the change log, which would be a step forward in this respect. Yeah. This is, of course, why we should have all packages and get. Did <laughs> <laughs> you? No. Okay. Sorry. That's what, what I was about to say. Um, it's probably easier to track email addresses from email from emails in the in the um, Git changes and but not everyone use Git. How are you a sole maintainer? And uh, yes, yeah, sure. But I mean, if if it is co-maintained, it's most <laughs> probably on Alias. So yeah. plugging in there, it's probably yeah. Uh, be careful about tracking uh, activity with Git commit logs. Uh, you import upstream sources. Upstream becomes a Debian developer. Um, plus the changelog is signed by the uploader at some point so that we can trust that information much more than we can trust git stuff because on collabmate I could uh, commit anything in the name of anyone in any git repo actually uh, at FOSDEM me and Daniel Silverstone toyed with the idea of doing a white hat operation against collabmate uh, which uh, maybe the SA are not happy with uh, but it would be fun to add to every Git repo in CollabMain uh, a field in Debian control saying uh, X uh, unchecked upload colon true and see how many of those end up in the archive at some point. I, I don't think DSA would have a problem with it. The alias admins might be have a problem with it. <laughs> it's, it's important to have enough sets of hats that we can distribute around everybody. Okay, uh, what I was saying is uh, we probably should take notes. <laughs> <laughs> so Git tracking is not a good idea. Uh, so far the only, the only conclusion we reach is the uh, use of contributors, uh, which Enrico also suggests, and it's a cool idea. Uh, having the way to, to, to get feedback, keep some data private, improve the tracking. Uh, regarding the tracking, how, how, hold on, sorry. Uh, we have another question there with the tracking. What, we, what can we do with the, with the teams? Sometimes we even find some teams that have been me, eh? and it's quite complicated because there's two, three people in the mailing list. Some actions need to be taken. For example, if there's a mailing in an alley, they probably need to be closed or hand over to someone else. Um, Yes, exactly. And then there's a, there's a few packages out there which 
while they appear to be maintained by a team, actually it's just one person yep. and they've set it up to get around be, being noticed. Um, so, of course, if they go away, that's even worse if it's not an Alioth list, you've got no idea who's on that main t who is actually on that mailing list. Uh, uh, change, yeah. A question for DSA. <laughs> uh, do we have any way to track all the bouncing alias? I mean, if I send an email to some developer, if it's, the, the email is bouncing? Oh, bounces. Um, we currently don't track that, I think. It would, and it, also, it, it's not that. So there are uh, two sides of that. There's the there's list master, which obviously does it for lists. Okay. Uh, we don't currently do it for the normal Debian aliases. Mm. Uh, we possibly should, um, because last time when so about a yeah, year ago we did a fairly large switch over over how we do the email routing mm. on on Debian org, and during that process we discovered a few people who whose email, like their Debian org email and the forwarding, mm. like completely didn't work. Okay. Uh, there is a complica complicating factor there in that we don't necessarily actually have email addresses for all accounts, but that's something which I think we should rather fix than say, yeah, that's a desirable property. Okay. Because we get sometimes uh, reports and emails bouncing them. <laughs> So it will be easy, and it will be a, w a very easy way to trigger action from me and from them and whatever. Yes. At, at least tracking not so far as 400, let's say 500 or something. Yeah, so the, the problem doing uh, just simple bounce tracking there is that some people will bounce their email based on it being spam. Yeah. So people shouldn't do that, but people still do it. So. It, I, I mean, you would get a, a good bunch of false positives. So I'm not sure. Like, it, it might be an extra data source, so you can use it to verify whether yep. all their emails are bouncing. Okay. I mean, we can we can detect the, the percentage. But actually, if we send an email and it bounces, <laughs> yeah, then, then obviously, uh, and then you also get the yeah. answer. So you can figure out yeah. whether you know it says spam detected or yeah. it says like a user unknown. Okay. Okay, any more ideas? Yeah, so I I if you want that, then please file an RT ticket so we actually keep track of it rather than, you know, I standing here saying, yes, that's a good idea, and then I forget because there's a good party tonight okay. and nothing happens. Okay. Regarding the hijacking and orphanage, I, I have one question for, for, for people in the audience. Uh, has anyone taken packages and not notifying me, like hijacking one package? And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've kind of done that in the last couple of weeks, and I haven't okay. notified Mia yet. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> It should. Pro I, I don't know if the developer's reference says that you should do so, but if it doesn't, then it should. Yeah, it, it actually says you should. I okay. think it's in some section like beyond packaging or something like that. I don't remember. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I I read the dev ref like when I became a DD fourteen <laughs> years ago and haven't really read it afterwards. So. <laughs> so I will ask another question. I mean. How much manpower does the MIA or QA team have in general at the moment? Ooh. Exactly. I mean, it's to make a point. Obviously, we're all talking about lots of things that it would be lovely to have here. I'm assuming also lovely to have would be manpower to make these happen. Yeah. I, yes. I, I, I'm I making a point of that for everybody in the audience. Yeah, I was. I was actually planning to give a call for for help, but we were discussing with Anna also that. Uh, right now, the uh, situation is quite complicated with the, I mean, it's, it's confusing. So if we want to change the, the, the way we work, it will be better to have some people also to help. Because currently we are only actively, Ricardo, Ana, and me. <laughs> so three people. <laughs> Mostly Ricardo doing the job, like day-to-day -day job, and me sporadically one week or whatever. Like this. 
So bits of the Mia team are actually Mia. Yeah. We also have an email <laughs> asking on the Mia team if you are Mia inside the Mia team. And it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it will not be the first time I remember I, before some people asked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, we close a little bit early. So. <laughs>